Hello and welcome aboard Whale Pod to another Genshin Impact video. I am your Captain Whale, and in today's video, we will hopefully be getting to the end of the Chapter 3 Act 4 Archon Quest. Now, our next objective is, is to head to the Aramites hideout. So, let's get on our way. One thing I do want to sort of briefly talk about en route is that my theory for, uh, uh, the reason for the beef between uh, Ruka Devada and the Scarlet King was debunked almost as soon as I had made it. Ruka Devada did not betray the Scarlet King at all, Archon War or otherwise. Instead, she stepped in to save him, and he sacrificed himself to finish the work that they had begun together. And it's really just the sages who have been spreading all the rumors over the years about the bad blood between... Deshret and Ruka Devada. When this was, I still don't know. I don't think this has to do with the Cataclysm. The time frame doesn't quite seem right. Honestly, I think the power that King Deshret unleashed into the world actually hails from the Vishap realm rather than from the Abyss. As we learned in the, uh, in the Three Realms Gateway Offering event in version 2.5, Flying directly in the face of what Hoyoverse has said themselves about not needing to understand event storylines to understand Archon Quest and other uh, major story content. The whole deal with the Three Realms Gateway offering was there was an imbalance between the human realm, the Abyss, and the Vishap realm down in Ankonomiya, and you had to let in the power of the Vishap realm to balance out the corrupting power of the Abyss. However, with Elazar, a direct re which appears to be a direct result of King Deshret's hubris, uh, having its victims grow gray scales on their body, it does seem to hint that it is a reptilian in origin, coming from perhaps, say, oh, I don't know, the Vishaps. Raman, we're here. Everything's been arranged. Someone will bring the village keepers back to Aru village shortly. I guess all I can say now is thanks for agreeing to help. Yeah, don't mention it. I think we can both agree you went to hell and back for it. But we share a common cause now. From here on out, we're allies. Where are the perpetrators? I'll bring you to them. Follow me. So these are the people who kidnapped the village keepers. Oh no, it's the scribe! There's no need to yell. No one can help you now. We've been all over the desert trying to find you! That's right. General Mahamatra? No, no, make it quick, please. Swift and painless. Whoa, the moment they set eyes on Sino, they turned pale like they've seen a ghost. You should have known that I would be coming for you. Wait, we were just following orders. You know what I'm talking about, right? There's no way we could have done all this by ourselves. No, not Sino. He's gonna tear us limb from limb. I could do worse. Please have mercy. Start talking. Otherwise, I'll have to resort to other methods. So, your superiors have kept you quite busy recently. Why? What are they trying to accomplish? Uh, they, um, wanted to extract canned knowledge. Don't play dumb. You know what I'm really asking. They extract divine canned knowledge. Then what? I... I, I don't, really don't know how to explain it. Well, you better start talking or you'll be sorry! You don't want to make things any more difficult for yourself, do ya? May I ask them a question? Be my guest. The sages are trying to create a new god, aren't they? 
Huh? That sure didn't sound like a fancy metaphor or anything. You're serious, aren't you? How did you know? There's no use hiding it now. Yes, you're right. The Academia is working on an important and potentially world-changing project. They are creating a new god. A god that will belong to them and to the people of Sumeru. It may seem as if Sumeru's academics are thriving, but ever since the death of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, scholarly breakthroughs have been few and far between. The withering of Ermin's soul has been getting worse recently. The sages have tried everything they could think of, but nothing's worked. I'm always hearing them say things like, if only Greater Lord Ruka Devata was still with us. Continue. And then, someone from the Fatui showed up. They called him the Doctor. He brought a, a, a gnosis and said he wanted to borrow the Academia's research facilities. The doctor was previously expelled from the Academia. At first, the sages looked down at him in disdain. But when he said those words, everyone's expression changed. He asked them, do you wish to create a god? This is what the arrogant ignorance at the extreme end of Academia looks like. First, the Academia spent a long time constructing a divine vessel, which was based on an exquisite humanoid puppet. After that, they harvested dreams via the Seb Zerus Festival Samsara, maximizing the Akasha's output. With the Doctor's help, and the Akasha now functioning at maximum efficiency, they were able to use it to extract the power from the Gnosis and convert it into a divine core. Next, they decided that their new god needed to possess divine wisdom. For that to happen, they needed a huge quantity of divine canned knowledge. It adds up. But how do you determine whether the knowledge extracted is of divine origin? Call it an educated guess. The Academia has been trying to figure out the exact source of the Scholar's Madness for centuries, but to no avail. Nobody can explain the cause of this phenomenon. Uh, surely you can see what that implies, Scribe Al-Haytham. If it's knowledge no mortal can comprehend, then it must be something only gods are able to decipher. In other words, it's the source of the God of Wisdom's omniscience and omnipotence. Hmm. But uh, the sages and product won't be Greater Lord Rukadevata. It will be the Balladeer. You must have noticed by now. The Academia doesn't care about who their god is. It's the ability to exercise control over knowledge and wisdom that matters. It is as if they are cursed with a desire for omniscience and omnipotence that burns in their blood. Some organisms demonstrate phototaxis, and thus orient their entire lives in respect to sources of light. For the sages, their only source of hope is the existence of a deity who embodies the acme of wisdom. This is but a form of phototaxis. For many scholars, the absence of a god of wisdom means stumbling in the darkness for the duration of their lives. Then what does Lesser Lord Kusanali mean to you? Is she not a true god present in this world? If you already have a new god, why try to create another one? From the beginning, the Academia has never treated her as a god. When the Academia first discovered Lesser Lord Kusanali, the newborn god of wisdom, the sages hoped that she would be as wise as greater lord Ruka Devata. But upon evaluation, they found that at the time she possessed no more intelligence than any ordinary human child. The sages never had a ruder awakening. This forced them to accept that greater lord Ruka Devata had indeed passed away. Not to mention that lesser lord Kusanali's gnosis had been used to power the Akasha this entire time. By herself, she has neither an Archon's raw power, nor the spectacular insight expected of a god of wisdom. Slowly but surely, people began to forget about her existence. So, this is the path the sages have chosen. Even now, they still refuse to acknowledge Lesser Lord Kusanali. I never imagined a god could be subjected to such cruelty. All right. Let's try to keep our cool. If everyone's in a bad mood, then let's change up our scenery. Raman, give me a few men to help us escort the village keepers back to the village. And these two scholars, they're coming too. Sure, as you wish.
All right, village chief's house time. We don't have to go to the statue, then walk all the way in. We can just go there and then enter the house. The village keepers you've found have all been returned to their homes, and each one has a dedicated caregiver to look after them. The two new scholars are being kept under close supervision, too. Really great work, everyone. Uh, the atmosphere is so heavy. It's hard to not feel weighed down by what we just learned. Despite everything Lesser Lord Kusanali has done for her people, the Academia has abandoned her in the sanctuary of Surasthana like a lost cause. Even though she's pretend uh, even those she's protected have never realized there's such a small and childlike god in the world. Hey! Say something! Stop spacing out! Come on, is there nothing left to talk about? In that case, let's all get some water and try to think about something else. Or I can go fetch some snacks. Oh, Paimon's so coming with you! Do you have any plans, Traveler? Gods above, you're not talking about work, are you? I want to share everything I know with all of you. Hmm. So you were still withholding some information? Yes, I'm sorry. I had my reasons. But now I know we're all in this together. we lived through all of this firsthand, it still feels super surreal to hear you talk about it again. Uh, that's everything we've experienced so far in Sumeru. What a whirlwind of a story. I felt like I was holding my breath the whole time. It seems like there will be more issues to face in the days ahead than I'd anticipated. Hmm. Still, now's a good time to make our next move. Now that Raman's joined us, we'll be an even stronger team. It's time to make a plan. Indeed. These events are a flagrant transgression of the rules in every sense. We cannot allow it to continue. So, everyone, are we on the same page? Crush the sages and rescue our god. That is our ultimate goal. No matter what lies ahead, I will do my utmost. Well... Let's brainstorm a little more about what other resources we can draw on. The next time we gather here, we must have a solid plan. Yep, it'll work out for sure. And that is the Archon quest completed. We now have a new constellation to apply to our traveler here. Viridian Transience increases the level of Surgent Manifestation by 3. A maximum upgrade level is 15. And that brings us to Constellation 5, a Dendro Traveler. Constellation 6 is likely going to be locked behind level 9 of the Statues of the Seven. Which brings our talent levels up to 6, 9, 10, or 6, 6, 7 on natural levels. In the past, I never imagined that even the gods could suffer from hardship. If we can find a way to change all of this, will this nation become a better place? The past few days have been some of the most challenging work I've ever taken on, and none of it'll earn me a single Mora. <laughs> I can't believe it. Look on the bright side, dear. 
Maybe we'll get a huge reward after this is all over. Hmm, you've got a point. Hey, what would you do if you woke up tomorrow with more money than you could ever spend? Paimo would buy boatloads of tasty snacks. That's it? Um, and maybe some tasty drinks as well? <laughs> How adorable. Well, here's to all our indulgent fantasies. If there's a chance they can come true, I'll give it my best shot. And here's hoping that everything we do from now on will change this world for the better. Don't look at me like that, whale pod. I'm looking respectfully. Don't rush. This is a big undertaking, and the planning and preparation for what lies ahead will no doubt take some time. Take it slowly. We need to make sure the plan is as effective as possible. <sighs> He's starting to read his book again. Hey, are you even listening? Would you like me to lend you something to read? No way. Your books aren't quite to Paimon's tastes. I was joking. I know my books are far too difficult for you. And I have no intention of lending them out. Ugh, you're so annoying! You must let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Though I cannot leave Avra Village, I can't help but feel... stirred when I see the looks in your eyes. I've never felt as roused as this when fighting alone in the past. I suppose this must be the power of camaraderie. There's still one more thing that I do want to do on camera here. And to do that, we need to head back to Sumeru City. And that is simply to show off that, uh, well, one Catherine might have a bit the dust, but they pretty much immediately replaced Catherine with another Catherine. That's, uh, this wasn't here before. How are you feeling now, Catherine? How am I feeling? Was I unwell? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't quite remember what happened before. But since I'm here, I suppose it was no trouble in the end. So, Catherine doesn't remember. Has the previous puppet been replaced? I'd definitely say that. We do know Catherine is a Snezhnaian bionic puppet. I don't think that she is necessarily a Fatui creation. After all, the Adventurers Guild is based in Snezhnaia. The primary branch is there. I'm actually going to go out on a limb here and say that Alice is actually the designer of the Catherine puppets. I saw a theory explaining a little bit about how this might explain how... Alice is able to keep so uh, so close to tabs on the Traveler and all of uh, of his slash her, depending on who you chose as friends. But also going beyond that, I do honestly think that Alice, when she becomes playable, not if she's playable, but when, is going to have a Snezhnaian vision, which we can already see. The shape of the Snezhnaian vision on our good friend Tartalia. That right there up in the top corner, top left corner, is the shape of the Snezhnaian vision. And why do I think that Alice is going to be Snezhnaian? Well, it's simple. The fifth of the Fatui Harbingers, the Rooster, Pulsinella, does have elf ears just like Klee and presumably Alice. From that, not only am I going to guess that Alice is Snezhnaian, I'm predicting here and now that uh, the Rooster is Klee's grandfather. Now on similar Fatui uh, things, with Dottore being number two of the Harbingers and putzing around here in the fourth nation we visited, I would not be surprised if our first encounters with, with number one of the Fatui Harbingers, Piero himself, actually takes place in Fontaine. As for my theory about the Devotion towards the Scarlet King's resurrection being used to uh, fuel Scaramouche's ascent to godhood. I believe I was actually wrong there in that uh, 
They didn't need Scaramouche's devotion, they were just trying to stir unrest. Maybe as a potential way to unleash their new god in battle, to put down rebels supporting the Scarlet King. The thing they did need, though, was apparently divine knowledge is needed to give Scaramouche a bit more of the knowledge he might need to be a god. Go away, clickety-click. I don't want to do anything for you, Susan. And now, with that a little con conclusion out of the way, I thank you all for watching this video, WhalePod. If you did like the video, make sure to like, comment, and sub to the channel if you have not done so already. All three of those help me out immensely and cost you only a few moments of your time. If you do sub to the channel, make sure to hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all my latest uploads. Now, with that said and done, I hope you all are having fantastic days, Whale Pod. But until next time, this is Captain Whale, signing off.